Hi everybody, Carissa here with Inky Fairy Designs for the Blitzy Creative Team today. And I'm going to show you how to take a really busy background in your art journal and highlight some simple shapes to tone it down and give you some areas for um, some journaling. So this is the background that I created. I was showing a lot of different techniques and um, one of the techniques was using an old paper towel and kind of cutting it and bending it to create these little um, like petal shapes. And so I that was one thing that stuck out to me on this page that I could highlight and kind of push the rest of it to the background but the background would still show through those flowers. So I just wanted to create one more so that I would have three on my page because you know I am all about the rule of three. So I'm taking some Dina Wakely um, of her heavy body uh, white acrylic paint and what I'm doing is I am just painting that white around the flowers that I that was what drew my eye on this entire page was those flowers and so I um, I'm just kind of painting around it with the white and you can see it's turning gray and that's because I have um, some I think it's a dilution spray and um, those are water-based so anytime you put any sort of paint or wet on top of that it's gonna reactivate and it was fine for me because um, it just kind of blended into the white and kind of created a little bit of a gray and I was it didn't bother me at all but if that bothers you just let you know the dilution sprays are water-based and so anytime you put anything over them it's gonna reactivate so I kind of try to save those for the end of a project but like I said this was a background that I had built and um, to show a lot of different techniques that you can use with items around the house. And then um, sitting in my journal, I wanted to complete the page and I thought it would be fun to show you how you can look at a page and kind of see things that stand out to you that you want to become the focus of your page and how you can push back the rest of that really busy background, but still have it show through <clears throat> these simple simple shapes of these flowers. So I'm taking um, some of this Dilutions um, Blue and I am using a paintbrush just to paint around the shapes that I had done um, by stamping with the old paper towel uh, holder. And um, so I'm just highlighting them and making them stand out a little bit more. And you can see as the paint is drying that that background is super, super intense and it's starting to come through that white paint. So I'm bringing in my Liquitex Gesso, which is a little bit more of a cover up. Anytime you don't like something on a background, I say cover it with Gesso. So I was like, it's time to bring in the Gesso because I just want to push that back a little bit further. And um, that really dark blue, I can't remember the color of it right now, but it still ends up showing through that white. It's just incredible the pigmentation of these Dilutions paints. I absolutely love them and um, it's just fun and, and I push it back enough with this layer of gesso that you can really see that the focus is now the flowers but you still get to see all of that fun layer and texture inside each of those flowers so it's just a really great way to keep that but also tone down your page so that you can turn it into something um, that's not just all about the background. <clears throat> so I'm going ahead and painting a little bit thicker um, of these blue petals just because when I went back in with the gesso I kind of covered up some of them. So I'm just um, tracing basically with the paint over the shapes that were already there and then I'm pretty happy with where it's headed. So you can see those circles, they're just coming through, but it's cool. I love it. I'm going to take this acrylic um, paint marker 
and I'm going I'm activating it right now because I hadn't used it before um, so to use these paint markers you just kind of push them down until the paint starts to flow into that tip and then you're ready to go and I just started drawing um, some stripes I wasn't sure what I was gonna do but when I started when I added those two stripes I was like okay this is kind of cool I can add some white journaling onto those lines and it will just kind of add um, some contrast, some variation. And um, when I added those black, I was just super, super happy with the way that this page is turning out. I'm using a Dilusions um, paint mark, uh, not marker, but it's a paint pen. It comes in a two pack, you get a white and a black. And again, same thing, you kind of shake it up and then push it down to get that paint flowing into the tip. Now, I'm not sure if it's the type of acrylic paint that I was trying to write over. I know that these were meant to write over the Dilutions paints, which are water-based. So I don't know. I, I ended up clogging the tip. And I know that's not because of the mark of the pen. I know that's user error. I just don't know why. So I'm, I've got to look into that a little bit more. But I would suggest not using it over acrylic. Um, kind of keep it for maybe just doing journaling over the Dilutions paints and um, other areas like that. So I wanted it to really, really pop on these black lines with these black stripes that I created. So I pulled out my Uniball uh, white gel pen, which is probably my favorite pen. You know, I used, I like to use them a lot in my art journaling, so I probably should have just gone with that in the beginning, but I really was excited to try the Dilutions paint pen. So I'm going to have to look into that because I think it'll be a really cool, fun thing to add in my journal. It just didn't work on this surface. <clears throat> so I'm just going over... Um, the journaling that I had already done there with the white gel pen and I have to say um, after I looked at this page and I was doing laundry I have a shirt that I really really like and if you follow me on Instagram you've seen a picture of it but it has florals on it and it also has these black and white stripes and I'm thinking that may have been like subconsciously the inspiration behind this page um, because when I looked at that I was like oh my gosh this looks this totally reminds me of my shirt and I really like it so um, if you can find inspiration anywhere absolutely anywhere so I'm just finishing up this um, uh, just uh, um, tracing over my journaling and um, super super slow uh, yeah so that's about it I think oh I'm gonna um, bring in um, some orange uh, I think it's the tangerine color from Dina Wakely heavy body and add some centers to my flowers after I note the lyrics that this uh, journaling comes from Mumford & Sons with a um, Faber Castell pen. So I'm looking at it, I'm like, it needs something. So now I'm bringing in the orange. I'm just gonna use the back of my paintbrush and add some dots. That's gonna be the center of my flowers and that really does complete this page. I think it was fun. Um, I know a lot of times I will make backgrounds, just sit and make backgrounds. And sometimes I go overboard, I will not lie. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. But this is a great way to um, Take those really busy backgrounds, see something in it that you really, really like, that you want to highlight, and then block out the rest of the page around it. You'll still have that fun, beautiful texture and color from the background that you had fun creating, but it'll tone it down, allow you to add some journaling, and just highlight certain areas of it in your art journal. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. For all of the supplies I used today, be sure to visit the Blitzy blog. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.